testing testing okay Did you do uh, A7? Finish already? Uh, when you do the website, how do you deploy the big model? Uh, oh, okay. 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 Because it's probably using too much resources, right? Mm. So probably you need to use uh, some other way, right? Test, test, test. Hello.
Missing sequences. Mm. Issue I know that for the MRI and all, there are a lot of stuff that they did lost. Okay. Missing sequence. Yeah, maybe they manual manually, if it's a sequence of image, maybe they just manually remove the sequence. I don't know. That could be one way of interpreting. But we have to read. I think they mentioned this earlier. Yeah, you can use very small model. Yeah, you can also use a plan P5. P5, plan, plan. Yeah. Well, if you big, use big model, you cannot host it. Yeah, because your computer is too small. CPD can work, but... CPD2 is... Well... As long as you just host the website and just put any model that can put it there, it's fine. But for your Jupyter notebook, you can use Llama, whatever, right? Uh, C5 doesn't, uh, we can use uh, uh, RCA and Jupyter. So for a website, you can just use very small model just to make sure you know how to make our website. But for your Jupyter notebook, try to use the good model. But if you cannot still use the small one, I just want you to know the way how to do it. All right. Uh, so welcome back to uh, the NLP class. We are approaching to the end of the class. I just noticed like we have only like two, three more classes. And then the rest of them is say, basically projects, right? Uh, talking about A7, uh, I got a lot of questions. Uh, uh, because this is your first time dealing with large language models, right? So a lot of you cannot create the website and host it. So I think there are many things that uh, you can do in this case. So for your Jupyter notebook, you can try to run your best model like Llama, Mistral 7B, or maybe uh, anything like this also model for 1.8 billion, right? So hopefully you can do it in your Jupyter notebook. But when you deploy on your local host, or maybe even somewhere, I don't think you can host your model, right? Because it's too big, right? So one way is just to swap that model with GPT-2, or maybe swap that model with something like Plan P5, right? Just my idea is you just know how to do it, but no need to do the big model. Even the answer is crap, it's fine. Uh, I just want you to know the full process, right? But for your Jupyter notebook, I really want you to do the real good model, okay? Otherwise, you don't know whether your AIT GPT really works, right? So that is the idea. Uh, now, let me talk with people who really want to deploy your website and really want to make the AIT GPT work. There are several solutions. Of course, the first obvious solution is just to use the free trial in Microsoft Azure or AWS, AWS, and they can give you a free one year account. And you can put your model there and just launch your website, very simple. But I know a lot of you here did not learn AWS and Microsoft Azure. And uh, I myself and uh, Gan know, but you can ask him how to do it. But another easier way is to use a uh, hacking face spaces. And anyone know hacking face uh, spaces? Anyone know? Okay. so. Hacking face spaces is basically a place, a platform in which you can deploy your demo quickly. Okay. 
it's not free. Okay, it's not free, but very, very, very super cheap, like super cheap. You can check the price, okay? Uh, but it's super cheap. The idea is you just create, for example, I think you guys are familiar with Gradio. Who know Gradio? I think almost everyone. You, you guys know Streamlit? Yeah, so you can just copy your Gradio or copy your Streamlit and put it in their repository and you can launch the website for it. Finish, finish. So it's very uh, easy, right? But hacking, hacking face spaces is not for industry. It's just for prototyping like show your client, oh, this is my app, okay? If you want to do this, give me money, I will make a real website for you, right? So, so hacking face spaces for those who really, really want to like, hey, Chucky, I don't care about paying money. I just want to make things happen, okay? Then you use this, but if you don't have money, then just put it in your local host and instead of using Mistral, swap that model with some very small model like GPT-2. And I know the answer is crap, it's fine, okay? So that is the idea. Okay, for the A7, anyone has any question on A7? Who, who can actually create already the, the AI that can answer something about AIT? Anyone, already? Yeah, you can already, well, great. So can you ask something like, who is the president of AIT? Yeah, okay. And how many, how to apply scholarships? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think uh, you can ask any questions to the chat box. How to apply scholarship? How many students here? How many programs? You can even ask who teach natural language processing, and it will say Chaklam Basu and Chai. Yes. So the, uh, you can do a lot of uh, stuff uh, in uh, in the AIP GPT. Yep. So hopefully you do enjoy that course. Okay. So let's come back to our. Uh, our course and uh, let us uh, uh, take a look at our timeline a little bit to make sure that I don't we are in the week nine Nine, right? Yeah. So the next two weeks, they will do quiz two, three, and project proposal, right? And then maybe a little bit of, uh, and then project, project, project. Right? Okay, great. So basically, uh, the next two weeks, you have quiz three and also your project proposal, all right? And what you need to propose your, your project and uh, talk about your project. Uh, unfortunately, you will notice that your project only have like three weeks, right? So you have to uh, try to consolidate. For example, if you want to do sales assistant, try to copy what we teach you in AIT GBT, right? And then try to change the PDF, right? Into sales and uh, do some uh, functionalities according to the requirement we give you, right? Those are the good first steps. All right. Uh, let us uh, come back to our our summarization. And uh, uh, this is one of the application I really like to do in my, uh, for my research students. Um, it, I, I'm so happy that I basically teach you almost everything except, except multimodal learning, contrastive learning, right? So multimodal learning, I will teach you today. Uh, contrastive learning, I'm not sure whether I have the time to prepare the slide, but I will just put it here as a placeholder for you to understand that it's so important. Uh, but actually, we, we're going to study a clip. So maybe we're going to explore contrastive learning a little bit. We already study all of this. Thing. So I hope that you all, all can piece all the NLP knowledge into one consul uh, consolidated data uh, knowledge. Yeah, we, you, I think you guys all know this, right? Spacey, High Torch, Hacking Face, Lang Chain. Yeah, but you guys are a little weak, uh, you guys are a little bit weak in deployment, right? Fast API, but as long as you know Fast API, I think it's okay. You guys, as a data scientist, just need to make the Fast API. And then I, like the developers, will just connect to your Fast API, get the results and display, all right? 
So, so I think, uh, I think uh, I train you very well. Yeah. Um, hopefully. Uh, actually, for the metrics, there are so many metrics, but I did not teach you all. But I think you guys are already overwhelmed, right? With all the things I teach you. Yeah. Uh, but there's actually uh, a little bit more on that. Uh, for example, how do you evaluate your AIT GPT? Right? There are many ways, uh, but I did not uh, teach you. Did you teach how to evaluate LLM? Like uh, AIT GPT chatbot? No, right? Overview, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so those are the things that you may want to explore by yourself, right? Yeah, I cannot really teach you like uh, everything, but I just want to tell you that there's something I did not teach you. Yes. Great. So hopefully you learn this uh, class and know many things and can do uh, a lot of career on it. Okay, great. Uh, so we learn about natural language generation, language modeling, conditional language modeling, how to train, how to decode the problem of beam search, which is we don't know what is the best size. This is the problem of beam size. We also talk about sampling and the problem of top K sampling. And we introduce top P sampling. So in in theory, we combine top K and top P. We also learn about temperature. You may be surprised by this symbol tau, T-A-U, but it's simply a number. But what number to use? I don't know. You need to copy the industry. We also come to the topic of text summarization and we define the summarization tasks. We talk about data sets. We talk about two main types of summarization, extractive, abstractive. And I also draw a picture, right? How they, what is the typical approach of each of them and how they are distinctly different. This is the first paper on summarization using uh, attention. This is a very popular paper on how do you decide whether when to copy and when to uh, summarize from scratch. Then in 2019, we switched to pre-trained era. Until now, everyone is using pre-trained. No one used LSTM. So if you use BERT, you can just ex do extractive, but make sure you put CLS because you need to select candidate sentence. Understand that. In BART, this is a, it's a go-to model for summarization. If you want to do summarization, just think that encoder decoder architecture is the best because you can see that they compare here, encoder architecture cannot win. Uh, I'm not sure one of them could be decoder architecture, cannot win. So encoder decoder architecture is a very strong model for summarization. But um, please remember that this part, sen token masking, sentence permutation, document rotation, document deletion, text infilling is a pre-training process. So you don't do this at your life. Oh, except you are you have the GPU to pre-train, but if you're just the industry guy, you don't do this. You just take BART and find you. Mm. But if you are a researcher, you will probably play around with the pre-training objectives. Uh, so last time we have, we stopped here evaluation. So uh, the first popular uh, metric for evaluating summarization is Blue, Blue score is called bilingual evaluation study. Um, I will just skip. Okay, and uh, I will just talk about the example. So let's say a reference sentence is the way to make people trustworthy is to trust them. Hypothesis sentence. This is the sentence that. Uh, 
generated by my model. To make people trustworthy, you need to trust them. If this is the answer and this is the ground truth, what is blue score? I, let's say I want to compute something called blue one. What is blue one? Blue one means one gram match in hypothesis divided by total one gram in hypothesis. So one gram match is seven. You can count. Um, make people trustworthy. Trust them to uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I miss anything? Okay, two, yeah, two, right? Mm -hmm. So seven, seven words that are match divided by the total number of one gram in hypothesis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so that is blue one. Oh, of course you can do blue two, it's called two grams, and you can compute accordingly, and that is five divided by eight. So how do I get this eight? Well, one, how do I get this eight? How do I get this eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? So that is a uh, total two grams of basically two to total bigrams in hypothesis. Of course you can do blue three and I will stop. And blue four you can also do. And then the total blue score is, you take the logarithm of blue one, logarithm of blue two, blue three, blue four. Uh, why logarithm? because it can be a very small number. We want to take a log to make the number more stable. We did multiply one fourth because it's simply a good number. And then you exponential it to turn it into a positive number. And then you can multiply any uh, penalty if you want. And a penalty is simply equal to one if the length of hypothesis is greater than length of reference. Otherwise, it's this way. Uh, and uh, if you want to uh, know this penalty, maybe you want to how this number comes from, then uh, you can read this paper. Um, when you code, how do you code this? Super easy. You don't really need to know that equation that I just told you. Once you believe it, you don't you forget about it, okay? And just code. So, I mean, I, by the way, this is not the only way you can code, okay? Hacking face also have blue. So, for example, you just do this, you create a glue, and then your hypothesis, reference, and just say blue score finished already. You get the blue score, okay? So, the, in implementation, you don't need to implement it. You just use the library, okay? And there are probably 50 libraries that can do this. So, you don't need to know. You don't only know, need to know what does blue mean. Another uh, famous uh, metric is called uh, Rouge. Okay, uh, we don't call it ro Rock. Okay, we call it Rouge. Rouge score. Uh, rock is uh, from Star Wars. Okay, um, so so again, Rouge is super simple, and I would not show you the theory. I would just show you uh, the how to do. So let's say this is the reference. This is the hypothesis. Um, root one is everything the same divided but in reference, right? So it's seven divided by 10, right? So that is uh, the slight difference. Um, but anyway, I, I don't think you will ever remember what I teach you. So whenever you do your thesis or industry, just go and search again, what is root score, right? I do this many times, even today. So, so I just want to teach you like, there's nothing complicated, don't be afraid of that, okay? And then how to code it? Well, there's a library called Rouge. 
that's imported, take the score, take the hypothesis and reference and put them in, right? Then you can get the score right away. Yes. So this too, uh, by the way, this is not the only way you can implement. There are many libraries. Um, so the, what is the difference between Roach and Blue? Uh, Blue is usually has a single number. It's just a single metric. But Roach has uh, different roots. They don't report it as one number. For example, Roach1, Roach2 mean bigram, Roach L mean longest common subsequence, right? So, so the, usually we use uh, them separately. Which one is more, more widely used? If I'm not wrong, because I work in summarization so much, root score is the most common metric, really. No one uses blue anymore. Yep. I, I, do you see blue, people using blue in summarization? Not much, right? Only root, right? Um, I will not talk too much each sentence, but I just want to summarize that you will see that this metrics that I just told you is not perfect, right? How you can say that this is a good summary? You cannot just say that it's overlap, right? It doesn't make sense, right? But currently it is like that. Currently it's like that. So in this picture, the, the y-axis is blue, the x-axis is human score. You can see it's not correlated. Not correlated means what? Means that blue score cannot say that it's a good summary, right? Human, human, if blue score is correlated to a human, it's good, but it's not. Um, in here, they try to use some uh, embedding, right? They take the embedding of words, right? So for example, I have the sentence, I take the word to wake. If I'm not wrong, they use word to wake or global, I, I don't remember, but it's basically some embedding. And they found that also uh, no correlation. Hmm. That means that you cannot simply use very simple embedding like glow, fast text, right? Not okay. Uh, a very successful one is called bird score. Bird score. So uh, idea is very simple. You take the reference, pass to the bird, and take the final embedding. Not the embedding from the beginning, okay? Not the embedding like what to wake, fast takes, or whatever. You take the sentence, send to bird, you get a representation, right? Similarly for the candidate, which is the generated sentence, and then you do a uh, cosine similarities. Uh, they found that this way is good. So whenever you do summarization or anything related to this, this kind of thing, you must use first score, okay? You must use first score. Do you need to implement this? You don't need to implement. There's so many library already can do this. Yeah, just search. You, everyone must use first score. Um, of course, there are also many other automatic uh, metrics uh, that focus on different domain like fluency, style, diversity, relevance, length, and uh, compression, whatever, right? So there's a lot of research people are doing on different metrics. All right, summary uh, for the metrics. Um, so the generation is still the is still ongoing research, especially summarization, and also the evaluation metrics. Uh, reinforcement learning is a very exciting area that people are currently doing to optimize the, the generation metrics. Yeah, so for example, when, you, when we train, what is the only way we can train? What is the training objective? Teacher forcing, right? Teacher forcing is the only way. But teacher forcing cannot guarantee that it's a good summary. So how do we optimize based on rules for, or something like some metric? 
We cannot because root score is not differentiable. So we cannot put it in, a, in the model so that it can be back propagate. This is the problem. Root score is not differentiable. So how do we do? People propose that we can use reinforcement learning. Because reinforcement learning is nothing related to uh, back propagation, right? It's related to action and, and reward, right? We can say that if the root score is high, high reward, right? If the root score is low, low reward, and then optimize, tell the model to do it. So that's why a lot of people are working on root score, ah, reinforcement learning. Mm. But this area is still very little development because uh, reinforcement learning, I'm not sure, uh, I think Gan also told you, I think you also learned from my reinforcement learning uh, class during machine learning, right? It's very unstable. It's very unstable, right? So. Uh, uh, this is a challenge and I hope someone can, in my lab in here can work on this area. It's very nice, but it's also a very risky area. And yes, uh, the problem of lack of effective metrics is a problem. So yes, in academic publication, for example, when I publish papers, nowadays no one believes in root score only. You can say your root score is the very good, right? But every time you need to print it out so that people can check whether uh, you are doing correctly. So nowadays, uh, people don't believe in root score only. Yes, so that is a summarization. Um, anyone has any question? If not, I would jump to, yes. Yes, blue score, yes. Uh, so uh, uh, Min asked me, uh, is blue always a one to four? Uh, I could not say that. Maybe some there's uh, some version that can be one to five, one to six, right? We never know. I think more is better, right? One to seven, one to eight, but uh, the, the original one is one to four, original. He claimed that four grams is already enough. Great, any other questions we have? Okay, the next one is super, it's something I really want to teach uh, because is I'm always excited by new areas and that is a uh, multimodal learning. Mm. Okay, uh, do you guys want to have a break first? You guys, okay? Book, you do like this means, uh, yes, break? Break, right? Okay, let's have a break and we come back. Uh, blue is simply uh, they just construct into one single number all blue score but rouge create uh, three different score so rouge one rouge two rouge l yeah so so this is the probably the only difference so they are super similar mm -hmm. So what is the point of adding different strings? What, what kind of model? Well, uh, root one tell you like exact match of one gram, but the root two, root L tells you like, like probably it informs you the, how similar are they when, in, in terms of uh, length, right? In terms of length. So the, usually when we report these metrics in the publication, we just report R1, R2, and RL, always, yeah. But isn't it better to combine into one? Why don't we do more? Uh, we don't want to combine one because when we combine into one, we will lose whether it's, I think it's very possible that which one is good, but which L is bad, right? Which means that maybe my model is simply copying and not generating anything uh, useful, right? So there's a chance that which L could be bad and which one is good. So that's why people don't like blue. It, you, don't, you cannot see the small picture. Yeah.
<laughs> Are you good? Okay. Go through again. Yeah. And anyway, but you enjoy the course? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because my background is not English, I'm English. Mm -hmm. Very, very. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No problem. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. No problem. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. And uh, I think uh, uh, NLP is uh, not so difficult, I think. And yeah, hope you enjoy. Okay. And if you have any question, you can come to me about NLP. But don't ask me anything about business, okay? <laughs> This is what I mean. Yeah. I can see now how we can apply. Mm -hmm. The science can understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For my interest, it's from the perspective of how can I apply it. Mm -hmm. How you can tell the people how you can apply Definitely, definitely. Yeah. My actually couldn't business analyze and just what was in between customer domain and the two orders. Specification and just try to test and testing and check the problems. Mm -hmm. This is what I know. And so you know who in this area, in specifically in government, yeah, all ERP systems they have, but for currently the problem is uh, data analysis mm -hmm. and reporting. Mm -hmm. is a big issue. Yes, and this one is really going. To I think definitely summarization, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, for machine learning, yeah, I know to. It's really, really, really big energy. Yeah, yeah. Then automotive. Mm -hmm. really That's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very good. And then the, we can discuss, okay? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hmm. All right. So let's come back uh, to uh, our next lecture. Um, actually, uh, today I, I forgot to tell you guys that I have to leave for like 10 o'clock uh, due to another overlapping meetings, but I think, uh, I think we are good to go. Uh, I got just one question. By the way, I don't got any question about summarization. So, oh, maybe, actually maybe one, uh, why we use blue instead of rouge. I guess rouge give you a very detailed score instead of blue. So that's the only question I got. But for a project, I got one question. Like uh, uh, the idea is like, what, what kind of project? Because uh, we don't have money to train any model. So what do I do? Um, for your project, you have to be creative, right? Maybe you can focus your efforts on making application. You can focus your efforts on comparing, right? Comparing uh, models. So, so you have to be creative what you do, right? But you cannot, I mean, you guys are coder and I talking to you, you guys are coder, I'm coder. So you understand that, come on. Just load the hacking face model and do. It's only five minutes, right? Then uh, it's not a project, right? So you, have, you guys have to be creative. But I know your problem. You don't have money to train a model, right? So you should not train the model, but be creative. Do something like comparison, right? Or maybe uh, create some application. Do some distillation. Distillation does not require distillation does not require training, right? It just distill. So uh, you can do that. Pruning, pruning is very very cheap. Oh, pruning is no training, right? So you can do too. So, so be creative what you want to do, right? But, but I would understand that you cannot train any model, it's fine, right? But when you, for anyone, I know not everyone will, will come to my lab because there are many wonderful professors, but uh, if you come to my lab, uh, we provide you some uh, GPU, right? And then uh, you can do things, uh, start to do things more seriously, right? Uh, but, but yeah, uh, that is the idea. Yeah, don't worry for those who are worried like, okay, if I do my thesis, I don't have GPU, you know. Uh, CSIM and DSAI, we provide you, you can even use cloud-based GPU, like uh, for example, uh, I just talked about it yesterday. Uh, it's right here. Uh, what, what, what is the platform we use? Jarvis, right? Yes, we use Jarvis, right? So you guys can, can try. So in my lab, uh, we try to use uh, Jarvis. Um, it's super easy. Jarvis. And uh, not this guy. What, what is it called? It's not Jarvis, it's Jarvis Cloud something, right? Yeah. It's in my head, but uh, we just recently use it. But you can see how forgetful I am. But it could be something like this. Um, oh, Jarvis Lab, yes. So for example, it's super easy. You just pay, you just upload $5 and you can do anything. You can launch a Jupyter Notebook and do, and they, you can use an A6000, A100, which is the, the best uh, thing you get. And then once you do, you can reimburse all the money you use for your thesis uh, with CSIM. So most of my students uh, spend around 10,000 to 20,000 baht for their thesis, right? Or 30,000 baht sum. If they do some session, it's very costly. So 30,000 baht. You can reimburse everything from CSI. Yeah. But usually, um, I also have GPU, right? Uh, and I plan to do buy more. So that you don't have to worry about this in, in doing your research. We are very supportive of that. Other universities are not so lucky, right? Some university, they don't have GPU, then then the student just pay from the pocket, right? It's a little bit pity. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> of course, the uh, Google Collab is also not bad. Uh, some of my students use Google Collab Pro and some students use Premium. It's also not bad, yeah. Anyway, uh, coming back to the most exciting topic of my lecture of my entire NLP is multimodal learning. Simply because I feel like this is the future. I feel like we are so smart not because we can only speak. We are not only smart because we can see. It's because we can do two things at the same time, right? We can see and we can speak at the same time. Not to mention, we can also 
touch. So we can understand one single thing by this is a table. We can look. We can call it a table. We can touch, right? I don't think we can smell the table, right? Is there any smell? <laughs> There's no smell. But anyway, we understand things through all the senses, right? That's what makes us so smart. Similarly, our dream of AI is the same. I believe, I personally believe that if we can connect all the modalities, all the senses, we can create a very powerful AI, right? This is the idea. That's why I am all in for this kind of something called multimodal learning. Yeah. But currently, multimodal learning is still very immature. What do I, why do I mean, what, what do I mean by immature? Well, the two modalities, a human has like five to six modalities, right? But the all, currently, we only research two modalities together. That is image and text together. We cannot do, oh, someone do image and video, someone do text and speech, right? Image and voice, right? Yeah, someone do that. Like you, you give an image, it will, it will talk about that image, right? So uh, that is also something we can do do that. But uh, I want to talk about uh, multimodal learning, right? So what is, uh, okay. So the, what is multimodal learning? It's about combining multiple modalities at the same time. It could be text, image, audio, voice, video, okay? Video and image, not the same. Is perhaps the most exciting area. Uh, I'm not sure you guys know. Uh, of course, I think you guys know. Uh, you guys know uh, something called Sora, Sora, right? Right. That is a multimodal. That is a text to video, right? That means AI. That AI must understand the relationship between text and video, right? This is a multimodal model. Yes. Um. And my lecture focus on how what are the different ways you can combine two modalities i will not go over all these 1000 models that do this okay but i will tell you different approaches people do to train this kind of model right and i i hope that uh, you can gain uh, intuition like oh these are the four or five different ways you can link two modalities together okay that is the biggest part i want to teach you of course uh, so I will teach you contrastive learning, right? This is the one way you can link two modalities together, right? And it's a very clear model is clip. You all must understand clip, okay? If you don't understand clip, you are outdated. You basically everyone know clip, I think so, right? Yeah, so you must know this clip, okay? Uh, prefix LM. Is also a very, very powerful learning objective. It's uh, very clear in SimVLM and Cosmos. Um, I don't think you need to know, but it's good to know, okay? Um, cross attention, you also need to know. For example, it's very clear that Flamingo, Blip, and especially Flamingo is a very uh, famous model, and uh, cross attention is a very clear, good model. Mass language modeling. It's called visual bird, right? It's also a, a, another technique. And lastly, lastly, there's no talk technique. You don't need to combine so many, you don't need to combine and train a model that you know everything. The idea of number five is just, you don't need to combine them. You just, this, is, this guy knows speech, this guy knows image, this guy knows voice, and you just create a router that can route to the expert, right? When it's voice, go to the voice. The voice give us the representations. Take these representations, go to the image, and then the image understand that and take one, right? So this is a combination of uh, things. Number five is not so interesting, but uh, I still can put it anyway. So, uh, uh, what is the application of so multimodal? You may say, what is the application? And I, I, actually, I don't need to even talk about this slide after you, we have Sora, right? But I teach this too in uh, last year. So for example, if I want to do something called retrieval, right? 
For example, I want to say, please give me a yellow hat. Then it will give me all the pictures about people wearing yellow hat, right? Yes, this is a very simple application. You may say it's so simple. No, it's not finished. For example, in medical image, please give me all the images with cancer. Oh, it's difficult, right? But if you can do, then it's very good, right? Please give me all the images in with cancer, right? So retrieval. Uh, captioning, uh, I, I guess this is just for uh, marketing purpose. Maybe you have image, you want to have automatic caption, right? Uh, generation, given a text, you create an image. We show question answering, right? Uh, given an image and the question, give me the answer. Given the image and the question, give me the label. And of course, uh, uh, you can also do something like uh, reasoning uh, behind, right? So that is uh, some application. So that's why I believe this area is so uh, important. And uh, to realize this potential of this area, my lab do one of the area called medical VQA, which I'm very uh, high, a big fan of this area. Contrastive learning. So let's talk about the first technique called contrastive learning. So the, this technique is uh, proposed by uh, Radford in 2021. It's called CLIP. And a CLIP is uh, stand for something contrastive learning. Uh, I don't remember IP, image pre-training. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. So uh, given an image, it can actually uh, uh, generate the caption of this image, right? Like very high, high probability of the right photo. I mean, the right correspondence. Yep. So this is what click can do, and it can do for almost any every photo. So the question is, uh, how do you actually uh, train? First of all, you need to have a data set of the image text pass. So where Radford get it? He get it from something called web image text of 400 million pass, 400 million pass, okay? So you guys won't be able to pre-train this without any uh, good, right? And then they use something called contrastive pre-training, okay? So how do you do this uh, con contrastive pre-training? Well, let's say you have a batch of text, right? You have a batch of text and you have a batch of image, right? Each of the text is passed to the text encoder and you get T1 to Tn, okay? And you have a batch of image, you get the embedding, I1 and Im. This one can be bird. I'm not left-handed. This is a bird, this could be Anything. It could be ResNet, 50, or Vision Transformer, right? Right. It can be anything as long as it give me uh, embed, uh, representations. Then you will have I1 to IN, correct? But we know that we know that I1 and T1 are same thing, right? We know because uh, I heard the UC pop is actually this top, right? We know. And we also know that T2 and T I1 is the same guy, right? It's the same pair. Yes. So then uh, what we can do is uh, basically um, always uh, maximize uh, this, always maximize uh, this uh, diagonal uh, pair, right? Uh, and take all this, the rest as a negative sample. Right, and I unfortunately I forgot to actually put the objective function, but I think you guys remember uh, word to wake right negative sampling right it's very sim similar to that in which you try to maximize this one and you try to minimize this one right just and put it in one equation yes and then just make just train through that objective. Then finish. This is called pre-training. 
future. Right? You, you guys need to understand what, what is the essence of free training. Free training should not need labels. This is the essence of free training. Free training don't use label, okay? You can use everything in this world, but you don't need to annotate, right? This is the essence of pre-training. And I already teach you how many ways you can pre-train in text, but for a multimodal, I never teach you, right? So this is the first way you can pre-train a multimodal uh, 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 pass of image and text. Then, um, how do you uh, actually uh, uh, use this uh, in, in, the, in the real world, right? Very simple. For example, you have an image right you want to generate a caption right you just send to this image encoder you get i1 right and uh, uh, you can you may have a, a, a set of uh, text that you already prepare whether it's a dog bird car whatever you 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 pre you 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 you, you prepare this before this before before any prediction, you prepare this. And then you have all the representations of a car, plane, dog, bird, right? You have representations of all of them. And then what do you do? Well, you just compare which one has the highest similarities. That is the answer, which is a, a photo of a dog, right? Uh, so that is uh, what the clip is uh, uh, all about. But of course, uh, uh, why I'm actually explaining, I feel like this is a little bit restrictive, right? Because you need to manually uh, prepare, right? Uh, I guess there are many other clips that follow up with that, and maybe they don't really even need this, uh, which is uh, even more powerful. Yeah. Oh, it's already 10 o'clock, so I will go a little bit, maybe one more, and then I can go. Um, so the, they have done some uh, uh, classification. They do some zero shot image classification and they found a clip can do classification much better than the, this uh, something called visual engrams. Um, and they also say that uh, their zero shot clip is much more robust. That is uh, if you give it very, uh, uh, images that are not so, that is very like diverse, then the other ResNet, like ResNet cannot work very well. You can see, you can see that sometimes it, it drops, sometimes it drops in some images, right? Category, but for zero shot clip, it, it consistently perform. It consistently perform. Telling that clip is a very, this kind of pre-training is a very, very good. Uh, but anyway, uh, clip, uh, if you can see clearly, if you really want to do something like multimodal learning, clip can only be used for classification. It cannot really truly generate from scratch because you only get the representations, right? You, and, and similarities, so you cannot purely generate from scratch. So clip is for VQA, when the answer is a classification task, I will say it again. Clip is for VQA when the answer is a classification task. Okay? Okay, so hopefully uh, you understand my point. Okay, I think uh, it's 10 o'clock and I have to catch my meeting. So how about I end here now and then we, I will uh, meet you again on next uh, Monday. All right, and good luck for your A7. A7 is easy, trust me. Yes, it's easy. And uh, great. Thank you very much. Okay. And see you next Monday. Bye bye.